Hello one and all, this is your friendly neighborhood TA here with a little video about conceptual photography in accordance with your final project for the class. So what is conceptual photography? Conceptual photography is all about ideas, symbols, themes, the conceptual photographer strives to bring a message to the viewer. It can be a political statement, it can be a social commentary, or a psychological idea about people, relationships, their emotions. Um, it, it's a relationship between photographer and viewer because the viewer is then tasked with taking what the photographer gave them and finding the message in it. Conceptual photography, basically what you're looking to do is take a generalized idea based on the meaning of words and transform it into an image which is more tangible and specific. Um, you wanna take, you wanna turn an abstract idea into a specific visual form of substance. Think of it um, a bit, think of it as a, as a more in-depth version of your color of emotion assignment. In that assignment, you actually did use, utilize, I can speak, I swear, conceptual photography to a degree, it's just now we're expanding on that. So you've seen a few quick images while I explain the concept. Now we're going to look at some artists who work very intricately, I'm going to say, with conceptual photography. Um, and hopefully it'll give you some ideas, some inspiration, and help you to get through this whole process. Our first artist is going to be Slinkachu, which is, yes, a pseudonym, um, chosen because of his in-depth love of Slinkies and Pikachu. No, it really wasn't. I have no idea. Um, I looked. There, There is absolutely no indication of how he came up with this name. Um, it just, it, it is what it is. So Sleekachu's big thing is he's on his website specifically. It actually says very predominantly abandoning miniatures since 2006. So he creates these miniature scenes um, and, and photographs them with, you know, probably a macro lens. But what you don't realize is that like the one on the screen currently, this this is set up in the middle of the road. And when he finishes taking the pictures, he just walks away. Um, he leaves the miniatures right where you see them. And I don't know if he ever goes back to check on them, uh, if he cares to check on them, or if it's just about taking the picture and then moving on. But as you can see, he's constructed these little scenes um, and used everyday items to do it with. So you don't have to get super elaborate with your sets and scenes. There's, there's ways to do it very simply. As you can see, I mean, here, he used Skittles. How cheap are Skittles? It's... <laughs> It's not a hard one to pull off. Um, it's about perspective. It's about where you're using the camera, how you're using the camera. Content is a big part of it, but it's not the only part of it. Because you, you can make a conceptual photograph based on camera use. You really, you really can. You'll see that with more of the examples that I show. Um, but the, the point is, it's 
can be done on a very small scale. And this guy has made a big career off of these itty bitty little miniatures. And it seems absolutely bizarre, but they're highly sought after actually as, as prints. Um, people follow Slinkachu very closely because he does put a lot of thought into these and that's that's part of what you need in conceptual photography is thought you can't just run out with a camera and take a picture you do have to actually spend time thinking it through setting it up but sometimes the setup can be very simple so don't don't let the whole concept overwhelm you and, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed our little foray with Slinkachu here. I totally love his work just on the, on the case that he just leaves it. You don't see that a whole lot. People just leaving things behind. So it's not just about a photograph. It's, it's an installation. It's a, I mean, take your pick on, on the number of art forms we're looking at here. So our next artist is Kevin Cardoza also known as Kevin the Kid. Um, and he, the, the model you actually see in the photograph, the male, is Cardoza. Um, he, he does a lot of his own, does a lot of self-portrait work. You'll also notice that there are things that don't quite seem to fit as far as, you know, how did he get into that scene? Cardoza utilizes montage. Um, this picture was actually probably shot actually with somebody screaming into a bucket of water or something. Um, and the camera was underwater. But the, the point is, again, I mean, you can see that some of the shots are very simple. While others will see, like this one, You've got the figure on the beach, but there's fingers reaching out of the shallows. This was probably a montage. I mean, I can't say that for sure, but based on the positioning of things, um, you, you can't hide a person under that little amount of water. And I, I do apologize to y'all that a lot of these images um, for some of these artists are black and white, but that's apparently a very popular thing among conceptual photographers. I don't know why, um, but hey, you know, to each their own. Your goal is obviously going to be to work in color, but, you know, the there, there are worse things. Um, this actually is Cardoza here in this image, and... You know, the the setup for this, he, he very likely could have shot this in camera, or it could be montage. Um, there, there's no real way I can say for sure which it is, just by looking at it, but with research. This was most likely montage, because finding that particular scene to set up in... Um, it is a lot harder than it would sound because you know that that's just that that's how it works um i think that cardoza does a good job of of illustrating conceptual because there's little things again you can see how simple it can be and don't worry this is not going to be you know a, a large example of simplicity 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 um there, there are artists who take this to a much much more complicated level and we will be seeing them um but again this image probably montage and i don't know for sure um how Yvonne wants you to do that. You may be allowed to use it, you may not, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but consult, consult with your professor, it's a good thing to do. Here, 
there there's a couple of different ways i mean if you really look you can see that some of the figures are repeated so this is most likely montage and if, if you're not seeing it um you can see this guy here is is right here again he is just smaller and, and in a different portion of the frame so i mean it, it, this is likely this is again likely montage based on the angle based on the structure um and because you know uh we, we don't have wings like that although he could have built the wings it would have been a lot of work but you know some people really put it in there um so this can show this this kind of shows the uh one of the darker sides of conceptual i i've noticed a lot in my research that conceptual goes to kind of two big extremes it goes to very playful and fun and very dark um so it's it's about what you're trying to convey as an artist and to you know i mean it's 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 your call you i don't know that you can really mix and match the two in a single project uh you're you're welcome to try if you think you can pull it off um but sometimes that that's a bit like i said those are those are two extremes so it it might be a bit more iffy our next artist is Lori Nix, and I mentioned just a couple minutes ago that we were going to see some much more elaborate versions of things, and this is one of them. Uh, Lori Nix, this is a miniature set. Her work is done in miniature, much like um, Slinkachus, but she actually takes months to build a single one of these sets. Um, this is all done itty bitty little items that she then sets up in a studio and photographs and she has one series called the city which is all about a post-apocalyptic um world and i wanted to include her one because as i said her sets are very very elaborate but also because um it's kind of fitting right now because of what's going on in the world for us so you know a lot of things have been shut down there are luckily people caring for them but um th this is kind of kind of harkens back to our current situation how we've gotten to where we're at in our class even but as I was saying, um, Nyx builds very elaborate sets. And these are, I mean, these are so detailed and so just insane, in my opinion. Um, but they're beautiful. You know, these are these are great examples of conceptual photos in bright living color. Now, the abandoned thing is, is not all she does. I mean, here we have, you know, a playful little scene with some a dropped cupcake and some bugs and, you know, nothing, nothing too devastating. But, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, um, I'm at a loss for words, apparently, because just her work is just so... Wonderful. I, I don't even know what to say. No. <laughs> um, it's not all gloom and doom. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that it might be a little hard to combine doom and doom and playfulness. And um, Lori Nix makes me eat my words. Because, let's face it, these, these little scenes, even though they're showing a post-apocalyptic world and how... All of our modern conveniences and, and modern places and such except for this guy I just really liked him um, this is very conceptual in my book and he's just kind of fun and funky so I threw him in there but back to what I was saying um, <laughs> all of our modern 
living can just kind of be taken back and fall apart, which is kind of gloom and doom. But knowing that these are all done in these this miniature scale, um, and the even the, the some of them have this really bright, vibrant color, it it does add the element of playfulness. So. I do take it back. It is possible to do playful and gloom and doom um, without having to, you know, go to some mass extreme of, you know, showing a transition from, you know, happy to sad or sad to happy. But again, you have to think about that this is all done in a miniature scale. It's shot in a studio and it takes. Lori Nix months sometimes to build a single one of these sets. So you haven't quite got that amount of time. Um, but you know, it, it, it's, there's possibilities. Now this image, I actually am going to point out that we have a bit of an inception thing going on here because this is a miniature built by her, put in her little setup to be taken a picture to have a picture taken of it but if you look on the left hand side of the image you're gonna see um some subway cars and sand and if you recall we saw that image not too long ago um let me see if i can find it so here here it is again this is what we were just looking at a little while ago and if I go back there it is right there for you to see um, so she's kind of done a little inception thing there which is fun in my opinion but you know it, it kind of gives you an idea also hopefully of you know yes this set itself is a miniature but she does these things to scale so there there's a little little look at things, a little insight into what she is, um, what she goes through to build these images, to create these images. Um, and so, you know, this one's not the usual, this, this one's not part of the city series. Um, I did throw a few in here that weren't part of it. I just like the color. Um, and the, the crazy perspective, because, you know, you don't see what's down below a lot. So that was just kind of fun in my opinion. Um, again, this, this one I chose simply because, <laughs> because of twofold. One, this is supposedly an art museum that's been taken back over by nature. So, you know, I felt it was kind of relevant to an art class. Um... And, and again, it, it references the current situation we find ourselves in. And, you know, kind of kind of shows what could happen if, if it all went so completely insane. Um, so then we have, we'll move on, to Kyle Thompson. And he, I'm going to say that these are, again, a little on the darker side. Um, there's nothing... I don't believe that is super um, too over the top dark. Some of them are just kind of creepy. Speaking of, um, all, all the hands coming out of the water kind of reminds me of like a bad zombie movie. But at the same time, you know, they're they're so clean and pristine. So. What, what kind of story are we coming up with here? You can, that's, that's the thing about conceptual photography is it's a relationship between photographer and viewer because we're giving them something to look at as photographers. We're creating these images, but as with all art, you know, a lot of people say that the artist has no say in what their artwork means. It's all based on the interpretation of the viewer. But, um, you know, that that's 
I, I argue that, but that's off topic, so we're going to come back to, to the point. Um, and so, you know, the, the conceptual photography is very much a relationship of artist and viewer. Um, definitely plays to the viewer creates the meaning um, concept of of art at least to a degree um the last one definitely showed that this one it it's got an element of of the viewer could could create the story but at the same time i think that thompson is kind of directing where we're going which is a big part of the conceptual photography concept we're, we're directors we're trying to tell a specific story we're trying to get the viewer to that point um and and again very simple shot here but there's a very elaborate story that you can come up with you know um to go with it or it could just be something as simple as you know whoops okay i found you in the fog it, it <laughs> sorry that that was um that was a really lame interpretation but we'll go with it but the the point is that again having looked at Lori Nix just a moment ago we're we're back to you know showing that yes simplicity is easy to do simplicity says a lot um this I certainly hope is photo montage like I mentioned earlier simply because I really hope that um, Kyle Thompson was not having glass uh, poured on him because much like Kevin Cardoza he places himself in the photos uh, usually if you see a male figure in the photos it's Kyle Thompson so I really hope he didn't have someone pouring glass on him I, I really do hope this is a montage um, and he you know took two photos and and dragged them into Photoshop and put them together. Um, this one definitely is montage because there's no way in the universe that he or anyone he got to pose for him would have actually sewn their lips shut. Plus there's also, you know, that key factor that, that shows it's, it's not real because there's no blood. Uh, which is great because I'm I'm not a big fan of blood, so I don't mind the fact that it's missing. Um, and photo montage is is a very very often utilized tool in the more surrealist styles of photography, and a lot of what we call conceptual photography kind of does fall into the surreal category. Um, this one not so much. This is some balloons in a river, or a pond, or lake or I don't know where he took it but you know the the general concept is hopefully conveyed um it's it doesn't tell the same type of story as the last one we looked at but again you you know there's a story there and that's a, a big part of conceptual here we have another one um you know is he when I look at this one I I wonder because the background is white and he starts out white, is he erasing himself or is he creating himself? Um, it, it could be seen either way. And that's, that's really kind of why I selected this little series of images. Um, I believe they're all printed as one, but it's obviously six different photographs. Um, because there's, there's different ways you can look at it, you know, and, that shows that uh, that helps to drive home the point that the conceptual is very interpretive um and you know I, I i think i've said about a billion times now half of it is simplistic half of it is elaborate and there's lots of ways to go uh this one i don't i can't tell for sure if it's montage or not there's some spots that make me think it is, but at the same time, the um, those same spots, 
they're they're very well blended so I cannot quite for certain say which it is could go either way again you know this one I, I once again picked because super simple but says a lot and conceptual photography is saying a lot Sorry, I had a lot of a lot of Kyle um, Thompson there, and and not much more to say without repeating myself for the seven thousand seven hundred and seventy sixth time. So our next image, next artist is Tatsuya Tanaka, and uh, if you're gonna notice a pattern here, I'm switching back and forth between large scale and small scale. Um, Tanaka actually has an, a series, um, miniaturecalendar.com. You can see it down there at the bottom of this image. He's been doing this for years, and he creates a miniature setup and photographs it and posts it every day on this site and has done so for, I want to say, about five and a half years now. Um, and that's that's dedication kids uh if you ever get to that level props props um i'm i'm not sure i could ever manage that mostly because that some of this stuff ends up looking very intricate uh like here we have you know salad turned into a coral reef um i don't know if that's an actual salad or not but if it was I can guarantee you getting those baby corn to stand up was probably a pain in the butt. Lots of glue is used and probably some strings. Uh, some of them are very simple, like the, I mean, they, they're very obvious in their stories. Um, I, I love this one. I don't know why, just because it, it amuses me it is really the whole the whole reason this one's in here it's because you know it's it's a cute little a lot of Tanaka's work are cute little setups um I don't think I put any of them in the presentation simply because I don't want to direct you guys in the wrong I don't want to point you in the wrong direction but there are also ones that Tanaka does that are pop culture things um marvel characters anime characters star wars and stuff you know he's he's done these little miniature setups in the calendar series um with those those kinds of characters so it's it's not just you know cutesy little hurdle music notes which i i'm sorry i think is awesome especially because i want to know how he got those ding dong miniatures to stay up like that I mean that's that's the potato chips and camels sorry this is great um, fantastic use of potato chips but um, <laughs> the point of all that is you know here I've picked more generic scenes okay here's here's a slight pop culture thing with Starbucks um, but it, it's not quite as as big as you know using marvel or or star wars or something like that but those are things you can utilize as well um and and so you know again you see here use of depth of field perspective these are still key things and actually they're probably some of the most important parts in conceptual photography i think um, because without that, you know, your story becomes very limited in, in what you can tell. If you always do everything from normal eye view at deep depth of field, you, you lose parts of your story. Um, so that that's a key part of things too, uh, as it is in every photograph, but I think in with conceptual work, it has a much more in-depth uh, importance. So next and last, in fact, is Michael Aldo. 
Um, this is back to life size scale and a little on the darker side, but and also much more simplistic. But I really do like all those work. Um, this is photo montage. They probably did not have a little girl with a cloud for a head or put cotton around her head or something. Um, this again, super simple, super easy, tells all kinds of stories, and you're welcome to interpret as you will. Uh, this is photo montage because there's not going to be a random stairway in the forest or a random doorway of any kind in the forest, and they probably wouldn't have set a fire. So that's, you know, here we see partial removal of the picture to add to the background. You've probably seen that a lot in images where you see like somebody's holding a picture frame in front of them and the portion of them is looks like nature because of it. Um, definite photo montage. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that Mike Aldo did not allow himself to be hit by lightning um, because like Kyle Thompson and Kevin Cardoza, he uses himself in a lot of his images. So I, I don't know for sure if that's him, but um, whether it's him or a friend or a model, I, I don't think he had anyone hit by lightning. Um, again, photo montage, there's... You know, it's very obvious in some, more subtle in others. Probably photo montage, because I would not want birds coming at me like that. I saw that movie. It did not end well for the people. Um, I'm off topic now, so let's, let's direct ourselves back. This one is a harder guess as to whether it's photo montage for me, um, because it's conceivable that they could have put this together on set, so we'll have to wonder. Um, again, conceivable that this could have been done on set, even though her hair's like that, she's either probably, they could have either taken the photo upside down or um, underwater photo montage, but very interesting one, at least I think. Um, actually, probably not montage. There's probably a flashlight under her skirt, but it does tell a very fun and mysterious story. So that is just about the end of things. Um, hopefully I've given you a good idea of what conceptual photography is and what you're hoping to do with it. Um, my, my last little thing here for you is, our last slide is, this is a list of various photographers who work very heavily um, with conceptual. You may actually be familiar with a few of their names. Um, most of the time people I know in these kinds of slides shows show photographers with big names, but I kind of wanted you guys to see what people who aren't necessarily super well-known are doing, people who are kind of your contemporaries. Um, and down at the bottom you can see a little Pinterest link. I have put together a board for you guys um, that you can look up. It's got a whole lot of other examples not included in this slideshow uh, that you can use for information, use for inspiration. There we go. And um, you can also, uh, there are some mini video clips on that uh, board that kind of show you different ways that you can get some really interesting effects uh, when doing these kinds of images. So I, I highly recommend you check those out. They're, they're great little tips. Um, ignore the fact that they're TikTok videos. I did not go on TikTok to find these. I found them straight off Pinterest. Um, not a TikToker or whatever it is they're called. But that's, that's really not the point. Check out the board. Um, get, get some more ideas, get some more inspiration, get some cute little 
tips and tricks and hopefully this will help you out with your assignment. Stay safe, stay sane, and create. Bye for now.